Hi guys, I'm back. Today, I'm going to be doing a movie review and a movie differences and similarities with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, directed by Mike Newell. This Newell, this was written by J.K. Rowling. So this is the first book in the series that gets thick. Which means that there is a lot to go over in a movie. However, as we all know, movies have to be cut down. So that means that a lot of stuff will get cut out. And that is the case with Goblet of Fire. Now I'm going to put this down while I talk about the movie. So I just watched the movie tonight. It was like, it's... 136 minutes i believe could be wrong but it's two and a half hours i believe i don't know how to put this lightly it's my least favorite of all the movies that i've seen uh it used to be chamber of secrets now chamber of secrets and goblet of fire are tied <laughs> First of all, the director didn't even read the book when adapting the movie, which is a giant no-no, especially when the book is this long, uh, and that really shows that he didn't read the book as well. Um, there were certain parts of the movie that, like, he tried to do the same thing. It was, it wasn't, though. It was, like, something completely different. Um, and he originally had different plans the director of the movie had different plans than what happened in the book. One of these being during the first task, which uh, has to do with a dragon. In the book, it is secluded to the arena. Already in the movie, instead of doing that, there's this giant chase between Harry and the dragon. And then the dragon just ends up falling and probably dying. Uh, however, he has said in interviews... For the movie that his original plans were to have the dragon burn down the forbidden forest which is a huge part in the entire series overall and he didn't even watch the other movies or read the books and uh, he even said that um, Whoever the person, the person that directed the third movie, which I will be talking about when I reread the series, I will be rewatching the movie. I don't really remember the other movies too well right now, so I'm not going to be doing books one through three yet. However, I will be doing another one, and then I'll just skip over Goblet of Fire after, and I will probably do... A movie review for five and six over the next week or so but I am also moving so that might take a while however I will be watching five and six soon so be on the lookout for those um, he just the the guy who made the third movie who directed the third movie did this dark, like, depressing-esque vibe, which represents the book pretty well, I feel, with the Dementors and all of the other stuff going down, that was really what the movie needed, was that little, like, sad, depressing-esque mood, and I thought that was done really well in the third movie, however, uh, Mike Newell, the person who directed the fourth movie, said that he was going to go really dark and really moody, and then he just saw that the person who directed the third one, he watched the first, like, 40 minutes or something of his movie, he decided that since he did the dark and moody-esque theme, that he could not do it. Instead, he went for the more comedic route, and there are some funny parts to the movie, and, like, I'm not bothered by that or whatnot, but, yeah. 
Next up, I'm going to talk about one of my biggest problems in the series, or in the movie, that is Dumbledore. If I can find that page. Then... I will gladly... Gladly, gladly, gladly... Uh, share that with you guys. It's before the weighing of the wands. It is during... This... Scene, definitely. I can't find it. Um, right here, page 276 of chapter 17, The Four Champions. Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry? He asked calmly. No, said Harry. He was very aware of everybody watching him closely. Snape made a soft noise of impatient disbelief in the shadows. Did you ask an older student to put it into the Goblet of Fire for you? said Dum Professor Dumbledore, ignoring Snape. No, said Harry vehemently. Ah, oh, but of course he is lying, cried Madame Maxime. Snape was now shaking his head, his lips curling. He could not have crossed the age line said Professor McGonagall, sharply. I am sure we are all agreed on that. So that is the scene after um, uh, Harry Potter's name comes out of the Goblet of Fire and it is revealed that Hogwarts has a second champion. In the movie, pretty sure all of us have seen this meme by now, instead of him saying it calmly in the movie, he's like, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Like, all angry and, like, moody and all of that. And, like, literally grabs onto him. He literally grabs him like that. And he just seemed so angry the entire movie. There were scenes where, like, people were talking or whatever, and he would just, like, yell, silence! And then he would do that, like, multiple times throughout the movie. And he would, like, grab onto Harry and stuff like that. Uh, when Cedric's body is brought back... Dumbledore literally tries to drag Harry off of him. He literally grabs Harry and tr tries to drag him off of Cedric. And I was at a loss for words. There's a scene like that in the third movie. Where he's out of character again. He's just not like angry or anything. And that is the scene in the hospital wing. When Ron is sitting in the hospital wing on his bed. With uh, a cast on his leg because he broke it. And... Dumbledore just comes up to him and starts, like, slapping Ron's leg. And that was really out of character for Dumbledore. And in Goblet of Fire, it was also really out of character for him to always be angry and all of that. He is the patient type in the, se in the book series. He's patient. He's forgiving. He's loyal. I felt in Goblet of Fire that, like, you couldn't trust him. He was not patient at all. He was very impatient. He would scream at everybody every time something was going a different way. He didn't really care about, like, others in this movie. Especially when handling Harry Potter. He's, like, grabbing him very violently and, like, shaking him, dragging him off of people just randomly. And that I didn't like. The next thing, this is a major spoiler for the book of Goblet of Fire. If you've already seen the movie, don't worry about it because it was spoiled within the first like five minutes of the movie, ten minutes of the movie. That is all of the mysteries that are in this book. This book is like a fantasy with mystery thriller aspects, if you know what I mean. If you've read this book, then you know that it is very 
um, it's very mysterious. There's the mystery of who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. There's the mystery of who killed the, uh, the Riddles. There's just a whole bunch of mysteries in this book. And none of that is really explored in the movie. In the movie, when we open up, it opens up sort of like the book. Uh, with, uh, Frank, I think his name is, right? Frank? I believe his name is Frank. Frank Bryce, yes, the Riddles Gardener. It opens up with him automatically seeing the light on in the Riddle House. And in the book, it doesn't start from his perspective. Uh, it starts from the townspeople's perspective, goes into Frank's per- per- blah, 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 goes into Frank's perspective, and that is when Frank sees the light on in the house. He then goes and hears an entire conversation between Wormtail and Voldemort. And then Voldemort invites him in, they chat a little bit, the chair turns around, Wormtail turns turns the chair around so that uh, Frank sees Voldemort, and then Voldemort kills Frank with the Avada Kedavra curse. In the movie, probably one of the most important characters in the book is revealed automatically, and that is Barty Crouch Jr., in the book, we are believed that Barty Crouch Jr. is dead. That he was sent to, to T. That he was sent to Azkaban and died in Azkaban. Instead, in the movie, he's already out of Azkaban. Like, there's no mystery to that. It's like, oh, he's here. And if you've read the book, you already know who he is. But if you haven't, you're just like, oh, okay, who's that? In the book, it's much more of a mystery. It's not him. You don't see him cast the dark mark at the um, Quidditch World Cup. I will be coming back to the World Cup in a little bit here. However, in the movie, you see him cast the dark mark. Like, it literally, there's like a 30 second to 60 second shot of him walking down with his wand, pointing at the sky and making the dark mark. In the book, it is believed that Winky did the uh, made the dark mark, which I'll be coming back to her as well. And then you don't see him; like he disappears. And at that point, it's pretty obvious that he is impersonating Mad Eye Moody. And it's also really obvious later on in the movie when. He invites Harry to his office, and there's a trunk in the office, and it's like a mysterious trunk. And then you just hear, like, this banging inside of the trunk, and, like, what sounds like hollering to me. And he's like, oh, I'm not going to tell you what's in there. Like, you won't believe me. And at that point, I was just like, okay, now you're just making it really obvious who this is. The reveal, reveal of who Mad Eye Moody, Mad Eye Moody was is whatever who was impersonating Moody was very impressive. He, uh, so Harry is talking to him in his office after Cedric has died and everything, and they've gone back. He's talking to him in his office. And he, he, Harry doesn't say anything about a graveyard. However, Moody says, were there other people in the graveyard with you? And Harry goes, I don't think I ever said anything about a graveyard, Professor. And at that point, at that point, it's just like, oh, snap, it's going down. Then you have this, like, <laughs> like what, five-minute monologue about, oh, well, you know, 
I wouldn't, you wouldn't have won if I didn't do this, and I didn't do that, and I didn't tell this person this so that he would tell you this, and I am person, or impersonated, I, you know, imperioed uh, crumb, I think that's the curse that mind can, that you can mind control, but, oh, I imperioed crumb so that he would attack blur, and then would try to attack Cedric, and then you would win, and you would get, you know, killed by the Dark Lord, five minutes of that and then like another like two minutes pass and then Dumbledore gets there and like Polyjuice Potion all of that the point is the mysteries of the book are completely gone completely gone the only one that they kept in the movie was Sorry. Oh, it was, um, who put his name in the Goblet of Fire? Yes. This is where we see one of the mysteries. Page 128, Chapter 9, The Dark Mark. There was silence. Harry got to his feet and peered around the tree. It was too dark to see very far, but he could sense somebody standing just beyond the range of his vision. "'Who's there?' he said, and then, without warning, the silence was rent by a voice unlike any that had they had heard in the wood, and it uttered not a panicked shout, but what sounded more like a spell. More smordray, and something vast, green, and glittering erupted from the patch of darkness Harry's eyes had been struggling to penetra penetrate. It flew up over the treetops and into the sky. And that is how the Dark Mark is, you know, cast. Mars Mordes. I think that's what he just said. I can't remember for the life of me. Life of me. Life of me. E -e -e. Nope, it's farther into the chapter. Farther into the chapter. More smordray. More smordray. That's what it is. I think they kept the words the same. Uh, so, yeah. But that was just completely here on the Next, I'm going to talk about the Quidditch World Cup, which is actually one of my favorite parts in the book. And I'm going to make this quick because this video is getting long. But it's one of my favorite parts of the book. And they cut it out completely. So I heard that there was something to do with the Quidditch World Cup. I thought that it was just going to be like the opposite team won. Or like uh, they changed something up to where like Harry gets in it or whatever. But uh, turns out... It starts with Crouch, like, shooting an orb, and then the orb goes, like, towards the camera, and the camera, like, pans out, and then it cuts to an entirely different scene, and you're like, wait a second, am I missing something here? And you are missing something here. If you have not read this book, you are missing the Quidditch World Cup, which is one of my favorite parts of the book that they cut out, and I was so disappointed. I actually yelled, what do you mean? You're going to skip over that? That was my, those were my exact words. And they did. They skipped over it, wasn't mentioned again. That was it. Like, I get that he didn't read the book, but if he did, he would know to have kept that in. Instead, he was like, oh, no, 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 nope, nope, we're cutting it out. And I was just so offended by that. I was so offended by that. But it's a winky part of the World Cup. Maybe part of the reason why he cut 
the World Cup out is Winky. He cut Winky, he cut S-P-E-W, he cut Dobby, which made me really sad because I love Winky and I love Dobby and I love S-P-E-U. However, S-P-E-U was one of my least favorite parts of the book. I still loved it, okay? And by the way, this is my second favorite Harry Potter book. It's my second favorite Harry Potter book. I treat it like it's tied. Actually, no. This is tied with Half-Blood Prince, which a review, like, or I haven't really mentioned it before, but I'm going to be doing a review and a ranking after I reread the series. And I will be doing the same for the movies. As I reread the books, I will rewatch the movies. So if I reread the first book, I'll watch the first movie. If I reread the second book, I'll watch the second movie. If I reread the third, I'll watch the third. If I reread the fourth, I'll watch the fourth, and so on and so forth. Uh, next, this is going to be the final thing that I talk about. <laughs> This is something that I didn't really like <clears throat> about the movie. That is um the entire when is it books battens box baton something like that. It is Bobaton. It's Bobaton. Woohoo! I found it out. It's Bobaton and Durmstrang. In the book, they just come in and they meet. They don't really meet, but like they walk in and they take their seat. Instead, in the movie, the girls from... Okay, first of all, Bobaton and Durmstrang are boy and girl schools. They are both mixed together. Like, it's boys and girls in the same school for both of them. In the movie, first of all, Bobaton is just girls. Durmstrang is just boys. I can get over that. The point is, when Bobaton walks in, the girls are all... And then when Durmstrang walks in, they have these giant sticks and they're like... Spin it around, boom, boom, do a little dance, blow fire everywhere. It's literally so stupid. Like, why? In the, what, 30 seconds that a, both of those schools are doing their little dances or whatever, that could have easily been cut down. We could have had an entire, like, minute to two minutes to explore other stuff. Like, the entire, like, Mr. Crouch Sr. scene where he, like, shows up and he's like, oh, yeah, there's this and there's ministry stuff and stuff like that, talking to a treat. And then he goes and drops to his knees and he's like, I messed up, I need to talk to Dumbledore. He's just, like, out of his mind. And then turns out that, um, <laughs> what's his name? Barty Crouch Jr.? Killed Barty Crouch Sr. And buried him on Hogwarts grounds. We could have explored that. But instead, we had to do dances. And all of this. When in reality, we could have just like jumped straight to the point. Overall, I rate this movie a 3 out of 5. 3 out of 5. Because... They cut so much stuff out of it and then added so much unnecessary stuff. The stuff that they left in was completely off from the book. And the director didn't even read the book, so I'm taking points off for that. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will be reading... Oh, yeah. I'm still on page 100 of Deathly Hollows. But I am flying through it. I'm about to... Please don't yawn right now because then I'm, I'm going to fall asleep. Um, 
yeah, I'm going to read more of this now. So, yeah, I will do a review for that when I reread the book, of course. With the movie, I will go through my thoughts on the movie, uh, Order of Phoenix, whenever I get around to watching that. Maybe tomorrow night, maybe the next night. I don't know. Um, and then, whenever I watch Have Blood Prince, I will do that as well. Thank you guys for watching. Wow, this video was long. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!